So just pick it off the top. Well, that's just a, such a nice push draw. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Today I'm with Lee Dietrich at one of his spots in Rancho Duarte, California. Thanks for joining me, Lee. Oh, you're welcome. Glad to be here. We'll tell you more about it later, but Lee is going to be the head coach at a Be Better Golf School coming up with Dr. Scott Lynn, a ground force expert. So we're talking about some of these things. And one of the things that was really interesting, one of the videos that I put up with, with Scott is that he said, if you look at where the arrows are pointed, the arrows being like kind of where your, your uh, pressure, like if I'm pointing the, pushing the ground that way, the arrow will become, the reaction force arrow will be yes. coming this way. So I said, why, to Dr. Scott, I said, why does Drew feel like the backswing is over there? And he said, well, actually, if you look at the ground forces, the backswing is really actually over as soon as the club starts back. Because as soon as the club starts back, you're pushing this way. So everything becomes kind of a function of you going that way. You're pushing to the left with your right foot. Yeah, you're pushing this way and it's making you go this way. So, so I wanted to see your perspective, Lee, about really how people can kind of think about their backswing in a different way. Because if you think your backswing goes all the way here and then you got to do something in transition, go, it feels like you feel rushed. But if you think of your backswing is being kind of over there, you have all kinds of time for transition. I think that the reason the, the backswing, the reason we have the problem, that players have the problem, is that when they go back, we've all been taught that people that are my age, I'm 79, have been taught to go back and load into the right foot and get over to here. Okay. So we're, we're on the right foot. We don't have time to come back to the ball from that position. So let's just stick with that for a second. So if we had this to kind of show how most people swing, Lee, is they would just do what? They would tend to be here. I would start maybe in the middle, uh -huh. and I would start back and I go down, but I would be at the top of my backswing, I would still be down with this foot. This is what most people are doing. That's yeah. what they're doing. And in a quarter of a second, you can't get back to the left foot fast enough. Okay. And the guys, I mean, if, you, if people want to go other than well, your site, well, you'll hear this. You'll also hear it on Athletic Motion Golf. Okay, yeah. From Sean Webb and uh, Mike Granato. But I'm here, so what I want to do is I want to feel this way. Now, Drew felt like he was right here when his backswing was over. Yeah. When we did the video down at the Grand in March, I feel like I'm, I'm ending right here because once I get to this position, I feel like I'm recentering coming back to the other side. This has morphed into Dr. Kwan. It's morphed into Milo. Step drills, it's morphed all, into all, this all stuff. those things that they've been doing. This would be the vertical forces you're getting. This would be in the okay. sagittal plane, if you will, which is the plane that's going this way up here. Uh, okay. So that's what that's one of the planes that uh, that Dr. S Dr. Lin uses: the sagittal, the sagittal, frontal, yeah, and transverse. The thing that the video you just did, what he was talking about more was the rotation of the swing isn't necessarily in the sagittal, it isn't necessarily in the frontal. It's a torquing rotational it's, it's thing. It's in the uh, transverse. transverse plane. Like you want to go back and you want to get the pressure into the left foot as soon as possible. So this is the wrong way. Yeah. And the right way would be something like? Down, down, yes. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's really what we see in the good players. And the average player, I mean, and, and the way to learn this is in your feet. Okay. They, so if somebody doesn't have a board like this and they want to kind of feel this at home, uh, I think a great way is just to have just a two -step stage, drill. stage three or stage one drill where you go. Yeah, just step, step. right. So step the left. thing is when you're doing this that we always tell, people always take this step too late. They go like this. You can't even do it. This step, swing, step. <laughs> That's way too late. So Let basically me. when you preload it, you, you step here. And once it gets to about here, you start stepping that way. Let, right? me, let me go in and yeah. do this. Yeah. When I was in, whenever I was younger, we would, I'm not going to say this is where the ball is. We would have the ball move the left foot over to the right. We'd swing back to this, we'd swing back to about this position, uh -huh. which would be about where the shaft is horizontal, and we'd step forward and make a swing. That was what they called the baseball, yeah. the baseball drill. 
Uh -huh. Fast forward to whenever Titleist TPI went and did this, they modified it like this. Instead of, they would go here, they would come back, but instead of starting the swing at this point and then stepping when you went back, what they're doing is they would front load it over here like Dr. Kwan's trigger. Yeah. And they would go here when the club got in front of them, they'd step. Yeah, even earlier. Even earlier, so they're getting more separation between the upper and the lower. And I know something that you really like is the, to have players do the Happy Gilmore. And what's so yeah. good about that? Well, I've changed my Happy Gilmore since I watched Mike Malaska. I used to oh, yeah. like to do Happy Gilmore because the left foot plants and the right foot can go through. Okay. But, but when I'm doing that, um, what happens when we go back? Let me go back and put this together for you. Sure. When we go back, there's pressure in the right foot. Now, as you work this up, everything is going forward. Mm -hmm. My weight's going forward. My arms and club are going forward. When I change direction and come down, now the club head is going out, but I don't want to go out. Yeah, now I the, now the arrows back. have shifted again. I need to come back yeah. this way, and that's why the downswing is so hard, because in the backswing, every, you're pushing to the left, club is moving to the left. As you come down, you're throwing to the right, so to, or to the left, so to speak, but you're pushing back. So go back and with what you did with the, with the Malaska, I got this when you, whenever you had one of your things with Mike. Yeah. He started step back, swing. Step back, step back, left swing. Step back, swing. So when I do my walking drill like that, I do it backwards now because I want the people to oh, feel okay. like they're going like that. So rather than Happy Gilmore was going Happy Gilmore. this way and stop, rather you'd have it, rather have it go. Because, be, because now you're putting in this motion in yeah. to go from here, you're at the top, you're, you're basically pushing this foot out of the way, you're pushing your butt back, you're taking your rib cage, you're taking your diaphragm or your chest down. Now I'm into here and now the club can rotate through the butt. So now I can rotate staying in my posture. Okay. Where I couldn't the other way. Okay. So yeah, something that I was, I was told yesterday was that with a driver that's moving 110 miles per hour it's pulling on you with about 140 pounds of force that way so you really need to be strong and pushing well, this way here's right. the deal go back up there okay okay come on down you had the video with dr kwan this club i mean dr yeah, yeah this is coming this way what yeah. was he doing with the rubber band coming here he was pulling you in, so you were counterbalancing those forces. Dr. Lin, so you yeah. stayed in your posture. Yeah. What's been helping me, Lee, is that if I if I feel I go left, I go right to start things, and then I'm pushing this way the entire backswing, it gives me more time in the transition to to do that. You feel that's like Dr. Kwan's backing in? Yes. Yeah, like when he had the, the karate mat there and I was going. So what kind way. of rotate, what kind of movement are you trying to get out of your body? You're trying to get vertical or rotational or a little bit of both? Uh, me, I'm trying to actually, Dr. Lin said I was, had really good rotational force and I, but I didn't use it at all. So I'm trying to get more rotational. So then but I'm whenever I do get real rotational, um, I do come up on it, I thin it quite a lot. So you come out of your posture whenever you Somehow, come. yeah, yeah. That was sounded better. That was a really good one. And that was one of the things that we found when I saw Dr. Lin was, I have to feel in my backswing that I keep my butt on this and not try to do the thing, because I'm not fast enough to do the thing where I go up, down. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just have I to remember. basically stay down because I'm, I'm just not reactive enough to do up, down. Better? Yeah, it's getting better. You feel like you're staying over more? In other words, when I mean you, you feel so, so you're going here, you're not going into the ball like this. You're backing up and letting your arms go out and you're backing your body up. I feel like I'm here and then my weight gets left enough early enough so that I have the, uh, the pressure. The, the pressure and, the, and kind of the toes are gripping into the ground that way so I can do that. So you can go that way. Er earlier. That was good. That was the best shot of my life.
Sometimes, Lee, when people do the foot pressures, and we've seen this because you're a level two certified Quan guy and uh, taught at a couple of these Dr. Quan schools, when people want to do the step drills and everything, they get a little swayzy and a little kind of like uh, this. So to get the steps and to, but to stay a little bit more centered, you have kind of like a cool tool that yeah, you use. Yeah, I would sometimes. go back to something I've had in my garage and haven't used probably for 15 years. Okay, let's pull it out. <laughs> if you look over here, Mike, this is this is Lee's bag of tricks that he brings with him. <laughs> All different rulers and frisbees and bands and. Well, it's cool. This is this is something I had that I picked up uh, probably mid '90s, whatever. Uh, it's it was it's called an eight board, and yeah. it's the infinity circle. So I don't need that. Okay. What you're doing is you're standing on here and you're making your golf swing. So you can't get outside. These are like a lazy Susan. Yeah. In fact, I'll show you what I did what I did online to make this easy. These, this, they don't, they're, these are out of stock right now. You can see I obviously got angry one time and broke this, whatever. But anyway, I'm here. So I'm on here and I would make my swing. Number one, I can't move outside this. Yeah, when you do, do that a couple times, and the thing that I notice is like how centered anybody who gets on this and doesn't want to fall over, they're, they're rotating really nice, but they're very centered. But, and and yeah. the thing I feel with this is what we learned from Dr. Kwan with the kettlebell, that the kettlebell starts swinging you. Yeah. What happens is I think my feet start swinging me as I'm going back and forth. And, and after working with this for a couple of days, let me see the club map. What happened was I, I made about 25 swings in a row and then got off of it and swung, and as I went to here, I, I found myself going around, but I found myself getting into my front foot earlier. Earlier. So now I gotta figure out why am I getting in there earlier? Yeah. I stepped on here when I was doing this. What happens is both of my feet turn. Now I've always felt that my right foot turns in my shoe anyway. Mm -hmm. That's a spiral staircase from Pete Cowan, you know we're gonna go here. Yeah. But when I've used this before. Or kind of like the Mike Maves move. Yeah, 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 that's that's why I first learned it was from Mike Mays. Okay. Okay, I would go back, but when I went back, I let this foot turn, but I held this one, I held it. Yeah. Held it in its position where it would be in my swing. So this time, maybe a couple of days ago, I started swinging this, and what I realized is when I started down, my left foot, instead of being over here, was turned inward. Yeah. So what happened is, I go back, I was getting onto that left foot sooner and then turning more as I go through. Oh, so when you were leaving this there and only moving the right foot, yeah. you weren't getting the good benefit of I the I wasn't recenter. getting the good benefit of the thing. I'm a yeah. you know, slow learner. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna go, but when I feel here, now as I go down, I'm, I'm into this foot sooner and all of a sudden I'm turning around going like this where both of my feet are almost facing the target. All right, so I'm gonna try that, we'll do. Well, I did this. I then, did about 20 yeah, you swings, got, yeah. maybe like here. You know, there's my wobble. The thing too, I shoot from this way, Mike, because what's interesting is when you do that, Lee. I have to stay in my pocket. No, no, look how good your plane stays. Because this is well, something that Dr. Kwan always talks about yeah, with the stage see, X continuous one thing, swings. One of the things with Dr. Kwan was that the kettlebell eventually takes over and determines the plane. I'm not swinging the the kettlebell with my arms, but the kettlebell swinging me. So I'm going yeah. back and forth like this. And then at home, I stepped out. I'm on, the, I'm on the hardwood floor. I go here, and as I go back, I'm letting this knee move maybe just a little bit with like the motion, and my thigh's gonna move a little bit. Okay. And I found all of a sudden, I'm feeling this earlier, sooner. Yeah, yeah. And it's really, and it's really, easy because I'm standing in my posture when I'm going back and doing it. And when you stand on here, you can't go like that. Make some swings. Give me about 15 sure. swings, just about three quarter, mm -hmm. if you will. And it's just, a, it's getting used to it. A little higher, right there. That's perfect. You feel the pressure? Yeah, it's like, 
your body knows that if you keep going this way, you're going to fall off balance. So you have to start torquing the other way <laughs> as you go pressure and torque so you don't fall over. That's awesome. And see, you have to say, try to stand up, try to come out of your yeah. posture. <laughs> you lose it. Yeah. So you have to stay in your posture at the same time. That, that was not me trying to be funny. That, that was literally just what would happen. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, you'll throw your hip out. I need that. Okay, that's good. Now, up, let me okay. step in there a minute. Let's pull this out. Now step in there and make some swings. Tell me what you feel. Okay. It just feels so much more patient the, in the transition. The transition's like it's, it's there. It's happening earlier and it's, it's you to feel a lot coming, less rushed. And you're not coming up. You're staying bent over. So then what I did, in my infinite wisdom, yeah. I went to Amazon and they had heavy duty, this is a 10 inch disc that's the same size as that. Yeah. They also had a 12 inch disc. And I know that there's a chart someplace that we can send you if you need that, that this is in the middle for something, somebody that's like 5'10 to 6'1. Okay. That's about seven inches apart, seven okay. and a quarter apart. So you just put them down there and it's you can make your own. Basically just inside your armpit. I had one of yeah. my students tell me, well, I looked further into it and I could screw this into a board and oh. put the other one on top, put another thing on top and he was gonna make his own like that. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So I'll just try that Lee. So I get that feeling that I'm on the board. Yeah, well, so you're not moving too much left. You're not over moving left with your slide. So I'm just going to do a little flip flop. I'm not going to try to hit this while I'm on here, but I just want to get about You can do that. You can do it. Okay, let's, let's try that. I'll go off the tee. So just pick it off the top. Oh, that's just a, such a nice push draw. There was a, I have a, I have a friend that's a teaching pro in Australia named Peter Croker, and he yeah. had a guy named Simon Owen, who was runner up in the British Open one year Okay. on that, and he couldn't believe how he, he loved that thing, hitting, hit, hitting his driver off of that board. Hitting drivers off of there. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah loved it. Absolutely, absolutely loved it. I like that. I think for Dr. Lin's, what I took from Dr. Lin's video with you is that the rotation comes from what your feet are doing, like what you're rotating this way, not so yeah. much from the sagittal or the frontal planes. You're gonna do this. You wanna get this to move. Yeah. You had that one disc thing. It wasn't like that, but it was similar. The, the Reebok core board thing? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You feel like you're getting left? I'm much more open for sure. And I okay, feel, I feel a lot mean? more centered because whenever I work on this stuff, I feel like this way, this way, you know, too much in this, I feel much more. Well, see that you now you're doing the infinite and in, that's called, they sometimes call that the infinity board, but you're, but. You yeah, I can see why. Cause it's like the swing never really stops. It's not like backswing, downswing. It's no, it's moving in a circle going around. Yeah. So what I would say to you, just off the top of my head, yeah. because you're more open, mm -hmm. the face is more open than it was when you, with your other pivot pattern. Yeah, rather you, than you slide to, in that. You need to let that, and... you need to let that release happen a little bit. So you need okay. a little bit more face road, face closure into what you're doing. Okay. That you couldn't do before because you'd have hooked it. And I see that one started about. That's awesome. That started about ten degrees left, left of where the other ones were going. Yeah, it's really good. So it's all about a matchup. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people. That's like the hot term. It's like, oh, it's it's about the matchups, but it's like, I think the main thing that I want to get across to people is it's not really so much a backswing and then a new movement. That's a downswing. It's it's like it's one thing, you know. Yeah. Is that how you see it? Yeah, I think that way. The other thing that, that I didn't bring with me, or maybe it's in my car, was those speed chains with the weights. Oh, okay. I've got one of those. And when you, the guy told me about it, they use that to get 
to get faster. But what I got when I first did it, I noticed that the club went, it did that figure eight motion that you're feeling whenever you're Same as in the feet. Same thing's in the feet. Yeah. You're feeling that same motion. Really exciting to announce that uh, Lee and I are doing a golf school coming up with Dr. Scott Lynn in San Diego at the beautiful Grand Golf Club down there, a really awesome private club. You guys are gonna to wanna to check it out. Go to bebettergolf.net slash school. It's on April 3rd and 4th. We're gonna have the world's foremost expert in ground forces, Dr. Scott Lynn there, talking about, uh, he's gonna bring his force plate and he's gonna analyze everybody that comes. It's gonna be a very, very small group of golfers. And it's really gonna be a lot of fun. The thing about this stuff, Lee, is that uh, even like the most trained eye, like Dr. Scott, you can't really see exactly what people are doing into the ground unless it's measured. So, and that's something that we're gonna have there. So I think very you're good. gonna take leaps and bounds with that. So go to bebettergolf.net slash school and hit the subscribe button to this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.